they're in love. That's something, all right. Don't know what it has to do with an evil ranger, but here we are in the 12th episode of the all-new Mighty Morphin Jew Rangers. I think we can tell from the title that things take something of a turn here. Jew Ranger decides to slow things down a bit, which is good. There have been two episodes in a row of establishing threats and showing the Zhu Rangers getting their butts kicked in rapid succession. Now is the time for a bit of a breather, to show that time has passed. It's nice to see Geki reflect on his pain, to befriend these two brothers and realize what he now feels he's missing by having a big brother who wants to murder him instead of punch bullies for him. Again, the fact that Geki himself was originally written as a big brother is completely ignored. All of that is fine, the problem is that much of what happens in Female Warrior Scorpion doesn't just slow things down, it puts on the brakes entirely. It's almost as if the series got bored with the whole evil Zhu Ranger idea because Barai doesn't even appear in the first half of this episode. And while he is present in the second half, he doesn't have any kind of a role outside of just generic henchmen. This episode is not about him at all. Instead, the story arc is taken over by the titular female warrior scorpion and... the dinosaur eggs. This blows my mind! Yes, this episode marks a return of the missing dinosaur eggs we covered at the beginning of the year. It's not like Zhu Ranger has that many recurring plots, so I would be happy to see them again. I just don't want to see them now! Within two episodes, this arc has already abandoned the story of Ryota, the story of Gnome, and a cohesive backstory for its villain. Instead of fixing any of those problems, they're just going to throw in two more plots? This episode really makes it apparent that Zhu Ranger has no idea where it's going with this story. And guess what? The dinosaur eggs are going to dominate this and the following episode, only to be lost again. So nothing is accomplished at all. Just like Ryota and Gnome, these eggs show up and are then forgotten. Unlike those two though, the eggs will return later. They just didn't need to be here. This basically becomes a Kid of the Week plot as Kazuo, the older brother, is kidnapped by Bondora and ransomed for the eggs. Back in Big Sisters, Power Rangers adapted the dinosaur eggs into Power Eggs, so it's not as if they couldn't have included them here. But I'm going to go ahead and say it's for the best that they didn't. Similar to the second episode of this arc, this is another episode where Ngeki remains untransformed while the other Zhu Rangers leap into action. He does transform at the beginning, but then gives his medallion to Yuji, the younger brother, after he's injured in the struggle for the eggs. I'm starting to get real Batman the movie vibes here. Supposedly in that film, Adam West lobbied for more Bruce Wayne scenes, so he didn't have to wear the Batman costume all the time. Here, they're a completely different set of suit actors from the face actors, so did Mochizuki Yuta just want to be in the show more? While it's a bit odd that two episodes of Zhu Ranger do this for two completely separate reasons, this does lend itself to continuing the plot in Power Rangers of Jason being captured. In fact, it works far better in that context. All they had to do was take the fight scene from the opening and shift it to the end after Jason has been rescued. The fight at the end, where Geki is untransformed, is simply cut out. And that's probably another reason why the eggs aren't used. There's really no footage of them that doesn't have at least some of the Japanese actors in it. So just like in Part 2, there's very little Zhu Ranger footage in Green with Evil Part 3. There's almost nothing from Female Warrior Scorpion. In fact, they throw in two scenes from the next episode instead. But other than that, this is mostly original footage again, and that creates rather the opposite problem. Zhu Ranger has way too much going on. Very little happens in this episode of Power Rangers. They don't get any closer to saving Zordon. The Power Rangers fight for about 30 seconds. Kimberly and Zack chase Tommy around after he lies about not seeing Jason, but they never actually catch him. The only thing of any importance that has accomplished this episode is that they manage to repair the teleportation system and use it to save Jason. That said, at least Tommy has a slightly bigger role in this than Barai does. Look at him at the juice bar holding his gym bag of evil. Yep, even brainwashed husks can't skip leg day. Eventually, Rita switches out Goldar for Tommy so he can finish off Jason. And while their lack of a personal connection doesn't really lend itself to high-stakes drama, 
It is smart to pit these two characters together in a one-on-one -on -one showdown. The fact that it's ultimately interrupted just as Tommy is about to win means the stage is set for a rematch. And unless I'm missing something here, like the few Power Rangers episodes I've skipped over for now, this is the first instance where original fight footage has been filmed for a Power Ranger. Yeah, we've seen original morphed footage, but it's always been used for simple stuff, like dialogue scenes in the command center or quick pickups when the corresponding Jew Ranger footage doesn't fit. So that's a pretty big milestone they've achieved here. The Green Ranger costume still doesn't look nearly as good as the Dragon Ranger costume. Not only is there that terrible shield, but even the main bodysuit looks loose and wrinkled. Even so, this is still an ambitious step. And it's hard to deny that while not much happens, at least the focus stays a bit closer to what it's ostensibly supposed to be about. Green with evil. I've been dancing around that titular female warrior scorpion person. I still think it's wrong to pull focus like this when there's this whole new ranger who should be causing trouble. Instead, he's off giving side eye while the other villains do their musical number, and you know what? This reaction is the best part of the episode, so forget I said anything. Where was I? Oh yeah, Lamy. She does upstage Barai and Tommy, but it could be said to raise the stakes even higher. Now, there are two new powerful villains. So while she's really only there because of the eggs, which as I've established, are a useless detour, it almost works. Lamy is Bondora's new executive. Bondora hired her in secret to track down the eggs. But that's not even the interesting part. The only reason I care about this character is because it turns out she is Gryphazar's wife. Yes, these two characters are married and are always cuddling up to each other. Lamy has been waiting 170 million years for him to come back and has made a deal with Bondora that if she retrieves the eggs, Bondora will give Gryphazar the ability to speak. Yeah, I've never mentioned this before, but Gryphazar does not talk, even though Goldar does. Heck, Goldar even speaks to Rita somehow when he's fighting Jason in another location. I think Pink Ranger suspects something, your evilness. He talks a lot, so his mouth moving tends to be Power Rangers footage or a Japanese villain footage shot for Power Rangers. In fact, his voice has gone through a big metamorphosis throughout the early episodes. Since production order was all over the place, the earlier vocal styles often mix within the same episode, with the later voice they ultimately decided to use. It was all Finster's fault if he hadn't built such a lame monster, we would have won! I myself will escort the eggs back to you, my queen. It's a fun coincidence that at about the same time Goldar's memorable voice is permanently settling in, Gryphazar is talking for the first time. In Power Rangers, Goldar is not married to Scorpina, Lamy's American counterpart. Why not? That's fun! It's interesting characterization! To be sure, that would really become a roadblock in later seasons if they had, but I don't think they would have been thinking that far ahead. Since Power Rangers cuts out both her primary motivation and her primary characterization, Scorpina is... just kinda there. Alpha says she was around 10,000 years ago, but that's about it. Rita summons her, and there she is. Most of her footage in this episode can't be used because it's either romantic, tied to the eggs, or features other Japanese actors. So she shows up, fights for a few seconds, and that's it. Again, it could be said to work in terms of Rita upping the stakes, but Scorpina makes a terrible first impression. This even leaves out the boulder attack! There's a ridiculous series of scenes towards the beginning where Lamy is a boulder, discreetly following the Zhu Rangers. She attacks the Zhu Rangers as a boulder! It's hilarious! And almost none of it can be used! We see that Scorpina comes from a scorpion-covered boulder, but that's it. Just like last time, these are hard episodes to judge. Zhu Ranger throws in everything, but you can't say that it does too little. Power Rangers does a bit too little, but at least it doesn't completely wander away from the assignment. Cutting out the eggs was good. Cutting out the marriage was bad. But I almost have to say Power Rangers does about as good a job as it could with the crap they were given. They're so different, but I'm giving story to Power Rangers. For characters, there's not much to say here for Power Rangers, it's mostly just a repeat of what happened last time. And Lamy is far more interesting and developed than Scorpina is, so Zhu Ranger wins this one easily. Finally, for action, both of these are fine, but neither one stands out too far above the other. Neither episode is really all that action-focused, which is a nice change of pace. Zhu Ranger has the epic boulder attack, 
but Power Rangers plays with strategy as Jason has to take refuge in the Fog Machine dimension. Both have a fight scene between the lead character and the evil ranger, and even though the Zhu Ranger fight has more explosions, it's no different from what we got in Part 2. I think the fight between Jason and Tommy, as subdued as it is, holds a little more weight. So Power Rangers wins for action, which earns it a win overall. Might as well hurry up and get these stupid eggs out of the story by covering the next set of episodes as well. This is the point in the narrative where the heroes hit their lowest point. The schemes of the villains come to fruition and the giant robots are seemingly destroyed. Both of these episodes handle that moment very well. Power Rangers is able to use a decent amount of footage from the original episode, and they shoot acceptable replacement scenes for footage they can't use. But the devil's in the details, right? Both series have set up the idea in advance that Rita and Bondora want to make use of a solar eclipse to stop Megazord and Daijujin, respectively. This doesn't come out of nowhere, it's been mentioned in previous episodes, and I appreciate that. The major difference, though, is that the Zhu Rangers also know about this in advance, while the Power Rangers do not. At the end of the last episode, Bondora tells them that in three days, Daijujin will fall. While perhaps it is smarter to not clue your adversaries into your evil plan, it makes this episode far more dramatic. It takes time for the Zhu Rangers to even piece together what the plan could be, and before they figure it out, Bondora is already openly goading them into summoning their guardian beasts. They know it's a trap. Barza eventually clues them in that some ridiculous substance called Gaiatron, which is derived from the sun, powers Daijujin, and that this eclipse will cripple it. But eventually, the stakes become too high for them to ignore the taunting. Gryphazar captures a bus of kindergartners, and Bondora's army threaten to push it off a cliff, onto the dinosaur eggs, no less. Hoping to save the Nisa and get away in time, the Zhu Rangers summon Daijujin, but it's just too much facing down the combined forces of Gryphazar, Lamy Scorpion, and a giant Dragon Ranger. This is powerful! The Zhu Rangers summon their guardian beasts despite understanding the imminent danger. That's heroic! Geki once again holds back against Burai, but this time it results in them all losing, not just him. Now he carries that guilt on his shoulders. Finally, the Dragon Ranger arc is finding its focus. The only thing that doesn't work here are those stupid dinosaur eggs. Saving innocent children is motivation enough. Including the eggs doesn't add anything to this. And at the end, the box is once again lost in a river, rendering the whole excursion pointless. Power Rangers is able to adapt this sequence effortlessly without having those eggs, proving just how unnecessary they are. And I will say, as convenient as it is, I think it's an improvement that Bulk and Skull are in the American bus. A bus full of random kindergartners is both a bit too on the nose, and also so generic as to not generate any personal feelings from the audience. Power Rangers has these characters as part of their main cast, why not take advantage of that? Good change. Unfortunately, leaving the Power Rangers ignorant of the plan is a bad change. Coupling that with the lack of connection between Jason and Tommy renders this telling inferior in every other way. Obviously, there's no hesitation on Jason's part in regards to fighting the Green Ranger, so there is very little emotion and tension leading up to the end of the episode. In fact, the Rangers seem to stall for no apparent reason. They have no excuse not to immediately summon their Zords, but they don't because... I don't know why. I'd say it's because they don't have the Japanese footage to do otherwise, but that seems like a cop-out because they do have the footage they need. There's no good reason to not have Rita taunt the Power Rangers in the same way Bondora taunts the Zhu Rangers, which would give them the proper motivation to match the later footage. Problem solved! Even ignoring that, there's only so long the story can stall by having the Power Rangers mull over what they should do about this. Because of that, half the episode feels like it's stalling. The Rangers see Goldar is attacking the city, but they can't morph because there's a random power surge right at that moment. Billy takes a couple of minutes to fix it, and then they're off as if it never happened. It's such a pointless waste of time! Then, while they're fighting, the Green Ranger comes back to the command center. Are you kidding me? He deactivates Alpha, again. He screws up Zordon's tube, again. This time he only pushes buttons instead of tearing things up, because we only have one episode left to fix everything. Jeez, this is so stupid! It's clear at this point that Power Rangers has run out of story, 
so they're resorting to repeating the same beats from the first episode. The only difference this time is that Alpha repairs himself and traps the Green Ranger in a force field. While Rita breaks him out in time for the big battle, at the end of the episode, Alpha uses the data the force field collected to determine the Green Ranger is Tommy. And everyone is so incredibly shocked at this news. How can it be? I mean, we all know Tommy so well and trust him with our lives, and he certainly hasn't been acting evil lately at all. Up until now, it seemed like the story was going in the direction of having the Rangers figure out Tommy's identity due to his inconsistent telling of events. And that would have been far more satisfying than simply having the computer spit it out. While far more of the Zhu Ranger footage is usable this time around since Geki is finally consenting to transform with the rest of his teammates, there are still a few elements Power Rangers has to cut around. The Zhu Rangers use their motorcycles to catch up to the bus, and Barza later appears in this sequence too. Because of that, Power Rangers has to shoot replacement footage, even though the characters are in costume. And, well, here's the thing. I've noticed there's an art to moving convincingly in these costumes. All the acting is movement-based since there is no visible face. There are practiced movesets, sharp and exaggerated, that have become staples of Sentai. And Power Rangers, eventually. According to bonus material on the Zhu Ranger box set, Power Rangers eventually hired the Tyranno Ranger suit actor. But it's very, very clear from this scene that Saban has not learned that visual vocabulary yet. As a result, the American Power Rangers just look really stupid, like Zack here or Trini here. I mentioned in the earlier segment that Green with Evil Part 3 actually moves around footage, taking some from this episode instead. One of them is moving up Goldar's destruction of the city so it can be used as a cliffhanger ending, as opposed to the knowledge that Bondora is targeting Daijujin. The other, though, is a scene of Lamy and Gryphazar fighting. In Power Rangers, that's simply used to justify why the fight with Scorpina is so short, because Goldar doubted she could take on the Power Rangers by herself. It's actually a very different scene here. Bondora has indeed given Gryphazar his voice, and despite the fact that the eggs will be lost by the end of the episode, he still gets to keep it. Whatever. But apparently the first thing he says is that women should be doing laundry instead of fighting. Yeah, he was definitely worth waiting 170 million years for. Surprisingly, given that this is Japan, the scene very clearly positions Gryphazar as being in the wrong. Bondora reminds him that she's the woman who fights too, and she's the one who signs his paychecks. Even with the revised context, Barai, who scoffs at their petty dramas, has to be cut around. Bondora warns him that she knows he wants to snag the Earth out from under her and reminds him to learn his place. Obviously, there is no such conflict in Power Rangers since Tommy doesn't get to make decisions on his own. Fortunately for me, this one is much, much easier to score. Story? Zhu Ranger, come on! Power Rangers is going in circles at this point. Zhu Ranger is finally finding its footing. For characters, it's much the same thing. Geki's personal crisis comes to a head, the villain's personalities clash. The only thing we learn in Power Rangers is that Skull has a thing for Bulk's mom. Oh, I want my mommy! Yeah, I want your mommy! Funny line, but Zhu Ranger wins. Finally, for action, I can't really complain about either one. It's primarily the same action. Power Rangers only really loses a few moments of untransformed fighting, everything else is the same. But I guess if I'm being fair, that means that technically Power Rangers is slightly inferior, so Zhu Ranger wins. It gets a clean sweep on this one and about time too. So that's it. Next time we will be concluding the Green with Evil and Dragon Ranger sagas. Power Rangers is going to take the last two Zhu Ranger episodes and condense them into one. That's ruined them in the past, but considering they've run out of story to tell, maybe it's the right move not to drag things out. I guess we will see. Thanks for watching! Please be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see videos like this before everyone else by supporting the channel on Patreon, I'd greatly appreciate that too. I'll see you next time!